These are Yamaha's higher end set of earphones from their TW series and might be a confusing buy for some folk. But if your priority is sound quality, these will leave you more than impressed. These are the Yamaha TW E7B. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. These earphones are quite an improvement over the last two earphones I reviewed which were the E3B and E5B. But before I get into the details of these earphones, thank you to Yamaha for making this review possible and sending me a demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump straight into these with their build. Despite being the top end set of earphones in the TW series, its unboxing is as simple as the E3B and E5B. After opening the box, you'll get all the literature under which you'll get the earphones in a fabric bag to protect it from transport. Above it, you'll get four extra ear tips, extra small, small, mediums on the earphones, large and extra large as well and a USB-C charging cable. The case isn't at all small and that's partly due to having one of the largest capacity batteries I've seen in a case for TWS earphones, which is a massive 800 mAh. The overall finish and feel of the case has a granule-like texture and feel to it with a spray of grey in its colouring. It's got a USB-C charging point behind it and four very bright LEDs on the front to let you know how much charge the case holds. Upon opening the lid, the case switches on to show you if the earphones are still charging and it shows you the case's levels as well. But the earphones only switch on when they're taken out of the case as with the other TW series of earphones I've tested. The case has a soft clasping sound when closed unlike some higher pitched cases I've heard in the past. The earphone's faceplate has a similar look and finish to it with a granular feel and has this circular addition to its design, which certainly helps these look quite different to the usual stem-like earbuds we've all come to know. These most definitely feel premium thanks to the addition of a soft-touch rubber-like material for the housing. These have soft-touch tactile buttons that don't have a loud click like the E5B has, and the ear tips are soft and a little grippy for a perfect fit and seal. They have a similar design as the E5B when it comes to fitting securely. It has a round ear tip to sit at the opening of your ear canal and the section that fits into the concha is not round but elliptical so you can twist the earphone in your ear until it fits snug and this groove here locks into place on the outer fold of the ear. It should fit most people well and help create a comfortable and good seal once you've figured out which ear tip suits you best. Despite being a large set of earphones and having the largest batteries I've seen in earbuds, these only weigh in at 7.5 grams each and at no point did I feel a strain on my ears over prolonged listening sessions. I I think this is partly due to the fact that they've balanced out the way this will sit in a person's ear once you twist it to your comfort level. So the weight is spread out evenly rather than putting all the load on your ear canal. All of their earphones in the TW series have an IPX5 rating, including these. So you can use these for exercise sessions or when you go out running and there's a slight rain. These come with Bluetooth version 5.2, they have voice assistant support and come with active noise cancelling. They also have tactile buttons to put in your inputs instead of touch controls which is rarely seen these days but I see it as being a good way to avoid any accidental inputs. Operating the functions on the buttons are pretty straightforward. One press on the left buds button will play or pause your music. Two presses will let you cycle between the ANC, ambient and off modes. One press on the right upper button will increase your volume and a double press will skip to the next track while the lower button will lower your volume with a single press and go to the previous track with a double press. Pressing and holding the same button for a little over a second will initiate the voice assistant as well. These also have an auto play and pause feature thanks to having a proximity sensor built within each earphone which you can put off in the app if you don't want to use it. The app doesn't have much going on in it which will help you spend more time absorbing your content rather than fiddling with extra features. It shows you each earbud's battery percentage and has a manual EQ and a few presets you can choose from to tweak its sound a bit. I'll speak about this in the chapter about sound. You get a transparency mode which works as it should and something they call advanced ANC, which isn't quite what you think it to be. They focused more on making the effects of ANC good while at the same time not affecting the balance or tonality of your music. There is a shift in audio when you shift between ANC on and off, but it's not as aggressive as some other audio products I've used in the past. Then you get a listening care advanced feature, which is what they use to elevate frequencies that you'd normally lose at lower volumes to ensure a rounded and full sound even at lower volumes. Unlike the E3B and E5B, this one's distance 
existing gear is an active system and keeps correcting itself based on real world inputs thanks to all the mics it has that are accessing your environment. The next active feature you get is the listening optimizer which works hand in hand with the listening care advanced feature. It's constantly working on how well the earphones fit your ear and how much noise is bleeding into your ear canal. To a certain extent, it's working as a DSP but for your ear in real time. After realizing how much work these are doing towards how they sound, you start to understand why exactly they've got such large batteries in the earbuds as well as the case. Then you also get a gaming mode which helps reduce latency while gaming or when you're consuming any visual content. It's pretty quick with it off but does have a slight improvement with it on and it's bound to eat into your battery life if it's always left on. If you're super particular about latency and you're a professional gamer, you already know that using a wired connection is the way to go. Wireless will work for casual gaming. The ANC functionality seems a bit restricted and by restricted I mean you don't get to let in certain levels of sound inside which you can sometimes do with other earphones. So you can only switch active noise cancelling on, off or have the transparency mode. Now I think there are two reasons why Yamaha has done this. Now one is uh, they don't want you to keep fiddling with the app and the earphones because they don't want you to be disconnected from your consumption whether it's video or audio and two is whenever you switch on ANC in any earphones there is a shift in the audio profile so maybe they wanted to restrict this to the minimum it's very clear that their priority is sound so I wouldn't be surprised if this is exactly why they avoided this when the ANC is on it's actually quite good because my studio is very close to a busy road so uh, whenever there are trucks or cars going by or honking I can't really hear it but the one thing that I really find surreal, which I realized on a much higher end set of headphones that I reviewed maybe about a year ago, whenever I go to interact with a door, you know, there is a mechanical feel that you get and a mechanical sound you hear. With these earphones, it's not there. With, with other earphones I've tested, you can hear uh, this mechanical input. With these, it's completely eliminated. So you end up feeling like you're in your late 90s and you've lost your hearing. You can switch off the active noise cancelling if you're not too comfortable with it, but the isolation on these is also quite good. Now when you switch on the ANC on to the regular passive isolation, it's bound to let in a lot of low frequencies which does happen, uh, but the passive isolation is pretty good. It manages to keep a lot of noises out that normally come in with uh, different earphones, especially if you're used to using an open set of earphones. If you jump on over to the transparency mode, it can be a bit peculiar because it tends to elevate higher frequencies and how because if I were rubbing my arm or just rubbing my hands together uh, it lets in a lot of those high frequencies making it sort of hypersensitive so when you speak the S's and P's there's a lot of sibilance likewise if somebody else is speaking to you that frequency range seems to be elevated and if you're walking and you drag your slippers on the ground those things are fed in so this transparency mode I think is a bit peculiar these come with three microphones per earphone which obviously contribute to the active noise cancelling and transparency mode but it also does help towards the environmental noise cancelling for any phone calls you'll be making. These have Qualcomm's CVC or clear voice capture technology which should help isolate your voice over the noise around you during phone calls. And as with other high-end earphones and headphones, these also use MEMS microphones and they've done a very similar thing to what they did with the E5B. The conduit that leads your voice over to the call circuit is wrapped in a silicon tubing so to avoid any unnecessary resonances from your voice. So these are all the features and specs as to how these would operate for phone calls. But to see how these would operate in the real world, there's really only one way to find out. So I'm standing at the busy street where I normally do a lot of these call tests just to give you a sense of how much noise these earphones are going to be battling. Uh, now there is a good amount of traffic uh, behind me and there is some construction work going on as well uh, behind me. Uh, now I I do think these will do a bit better or significantly better than the E5B but uh, I'll leave that up to you because you are sitting in the reviewer seat right now. This is how your recipients are going to be hearing you. So I have been on the camera microphone up until now and I'll switch over to the E7B microphone right about now. So now thanks to the addition of another microphone compared to the 5B now, these three mics per earphone, I'm pretty sure it will be doing a slightly better job or as I said significantly better than the previous model. And since these have ANC, what I'll do is I'll toggle between the modes to see if there's any strain on the algorithm for the environmental noise cancelling to see if there's any shift. So now you'd be the best judge. Now you can maybe let me know in the comments below if there is a shift over and what you think about this overall sound clarity. Uh, so I am in the ANC advanced mode right now, it is on. I will switch over to the off mode right about now. And it in fact does shift over. So right now I'm only on passive uh, isolation. So 
I can hear the lower frequencies, the rumble of, of the environment that's coming around. Uh, the 5B didn't do this. It didn't shift over to uh, transparency mode, which is, high, which is what I'll do right about now. So I am in the transparency mode right now, and it's it's a lot of the high frequencies are coming in right now. So it's it's hypersensitive, like I did mention uh, about the transparency before. I can hear all of this, but uh, I don't know if there is a shift over in the call clarity. You would be the best judge uh, to see if that works or not. So this is the demo that should give you a better idea of how these earphones handle their environmental noise cancelling for your recipients. And you'd be the best judge to decide whether or not this works for you. I do hope this has given you some more clarity about how these earphones function. And of course, I will see you back in the studio. These come with a 10mm dynamic driver and it's made out of a hardened polyurethane material to ensure stiffness and longevity and it's got a voice coil that's almost as large as the driver. And just like the E5B, this one's driver is mounted on the same axis as the conduit delivering sound to you. This will ensure that you get a more direct and non-refracted sound. These earphones have two acoustic tuning ports per earphone and this has allowed them to tune the airflow in the best possible way for this design. This has in fact contributed towards the way these image and stage. These support SBC, AAC and Aptex Codex and these also have a frequency response of 20 Hz and go all the way up to 20,000 Hz. On a volume front, I found myself listening to these anywhere between 35 and 50%, which is where I did most of the testing. If I go up to 60%, these get a little uncomfortably loud for me now. They can go a bit louder, but I wouldn't recommend you go in that area if you want to preserve your hearing. Unlike most other earphones, these are able to give you a rounded sound even at lower volume. So even listening below 50% down to 35 where I tested these, it was more than adequate. So you can even go low down to 10% and 5% and it still stays rounded. So thanks to this, I'm able to listen to these just before winding down at the end of the day without losing clarity. A big reason why these earphones are able to do something like this is because Yamaha has standardized something they called listening care across all of their earphones. This one's listening care doesn't work like the last few earphones I reviewed. This one has an active system that's constantly checking your environment and working along with that as well. This also has a listening optimizer which also works actively and works hand in hand with the listening care. It's kind of like a DSP but for your ear canal thanks to the little microphone that sits between your eardrum and the driver. Soundstage is a little more expensive than most TWS earphones have used and you've got those venting ports to thank for this. Some tones do give you the illusion of coming from slightly out of the earphones and this does happen more often than not and this does maintain a horizontal stage. At some points in time, it did give the illusion that it was pulling off a vertical stage, so I had to go back to the track where I thought it did that, uh, and it doesn't, but it seems like it's really trying to do that. Imaging is where these like to show off quite generously. In fact, after spending some time with these, these made me think that the last two earphones I tested had a noise flaw, not that they did, but these are so clean that they made me think those did. In fact, I have to keep reminding myself that these are not a set of audiophile grade earphones because everything they've done so far, be it staging, imaging, they've got an approach that has that of an audiophile grade of earphones. Despite listening to compressed audio, if you find a good recording, it is still a good recording. And these like to show off their detail with sophisticated posture. High frequencies are soft, detailed and confident in their delivery. It's certainly not a flat tuning, but it does present itself to you in a relaxed approach without ever being assertive. At no point will these hurt the ear with any genre of music, despite having good energy in this range. And speaking about music, somehow these made me gravitate towards jazz just to see how some familiar tracks would sound to me. Listening to It Never Entered My Mind, performed by Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra featuring Till Broner. Everything from the brushes to the flugelhorn to the higher notes on the piano come through with a compassionate softness that usually only comes from a wife after her husband's done the laundry. Mid-frequencies sit slightly more forward than the last two earphones I tested, but it seems just about right. Depending on the recording you're listening to, it can sometimes sound like it sits slightly recessed. It's not pushed too far back or too present with male or female vocals and stays well detailed and rounded, but somehow gives you the impression as if the performer is a step or two behind the instruments in this range. It doesn't get merged into any sort of confusion and these deliver this range like a seasoned set of earphones. Listening to Steely Dan's Babylon Sisters, these really do show off how dynamic this range can be. Thanks to good definition in all the background singers' 
vocal clarity. You can almost decipher every independent voice here. Also thanks to how good a recording this is. If you want to listen to some good recordings, Steely Dan could be a great band to listen to. Their meticulous attitude towards mixes is carried on through these earphones. Maybe not as well as some audiophile earphones or headphones can, but these are quite good for a wireless set. Lower frequencies can seem a bit recessed or on a flatter plane until you get to a track that's been mixed well. These do not disappoint when they're playing the right track. These have some good extension and somehow seem sensitive to the audio being played. I've heard some electronic dance music which sounded boring in the bassline but then moved over to an acoustic track which sounds energetic and full-bodied. Listening to Lean On by Major Lazer, it's supposed to have a heavy bassline but it's just about adequate, seeming flaccid and unenthusiastic. Then when I move on to a definitely acoustic Fleetwood Mac's Dreams, there's a prominent bassline that follows the entirety of this piece of music sounding significant and confident in its delivery. Okay, so these aren't audiophile grade earphones, but they've got all the traits of wanting to be audiophile grade, but in a wireless form. The fact that they are so telling with different recordings only lets me know that they have a level of transparency that I haven't heard on any other set of TWS earphones. If you do want to tweak your audio, you do get a manual EQ and you do get a few presets. Now, I've tested these on their flat setting, which is straight out of the box, but you can tweak these. Now, I think the manual mode has a plus 3 dB and a minus 3 dB level. Uh, this will also ensure that you don't have any distortion when you listen to music. But you do also get five separate presets, which are energy. It accentuates the bass and highs, making your audio a little fuller sounding in the lower frequencies and richer higher up. This helps when listening to thinner or bad recordings to a certain extent. Gentle softens things up in the higher range without losing detail and keeps the bass at a healthy level. This could work well for some acoustic music if it's been heavily exaggerated in the highs. Vocal elevates the mid-range and can introduce some sibilance making this preset ideal for audiobooks or podcasts. The bass certainly thins out a lot here. Groove makes things a little more lively than the last EQ with the right amount of bass and the sibilance doesn't exist with this preset. And openness ups frequencies that make reverb sound a lot more prominent, giving you the illusion of being a little more open. Then you get two user profiles you can customize and save your own settings in with the manual settings for the EQ. <laughs> So to sum up, when it comes to the build, these are definitely a premium set of earphones. You get that feeling right from the moment you touch them. I wouldn't say the unboxing is a premium uh, experience, but uh, once you get your hands on the case and the earphones, it definitely screams premium. The overall finish of the case that's carried over to the earphones is done in a very classy manner and it does feel quite nice uh, to the touch. Uh, now, one thing is that these earphones do look quite large. I think it's a hindrance for a lot of people when they see, see this design because it seems big. It seems like it'll be cumbersome. It's going to hurt the ear over longer listening sessions. With the design that they've incorporated with the E5B and this as well, with that oval uh, or elliptical design that sits in the concha, which you can sort of turn to lock into place. I found it terrifically comfortable over longer sessions, especially even when I compared it to some stem type earphones. For example, I tested the Oppo Enco Air 2 Pros and the housing of uh, the bulb that sits just outside of your ear is much larger. So when it sits into the concha, it's pushing against the outside of my ear and the inside. So it's not very comfortable at all. And a lot of people have in fact found that set uh, terrifically uncomfortable. They have obviously tried to cram in a whole bunch of batteries and all into that and uh, at the risk of comfort for the user. But in this situation, uh, it is a larger uh, housing, it, it is holding a large battery, but because they've designed it in a specific way, obviously they've put a lot of hours of R&D into this. It fits me perfectly well and the same large earphones uh, fit my wife very well, who's got much smaller ears than I do. Now the comfort of these is on point. I've not really seen any other manufacturer that includes a whole five ear tips in their box for earphones. Now obviously Yamaha wants to ensure that you have the perfect fit and seal so that the ANC of these works well and of course your audio listening experience isn't compromised. On a feature front, I don't think these earphones are lacking at all. They've got whatever they have to. Uh, but I think some people may not like the fact that you don't have the different levels of ANC control. Now, I think this has been done pretty intentionally by Yamaha because they don't want you getting pulled away from your content. And the app also resonates this very idea because it's absolutely bare bones. I've used some apps from other manufacturers that are just a little too confusing. So eventually when there's too much going on in an app, you eventually just want to set everything and forget it completely. So it kind of is rendered useless. So with this minimal app, you go in and do the tweaks you want whenever you want and it's not pulling you away from your content. I really like that they're sticking to using tactile buttons because it takes me back to a time when I used to use my first set of uh, active noise cancelling headphones that had tactile buttons. You know what you're pressing, you know what it's going to do. There's no accidental tap or touch that 
takes you to the next uh, YouTube video or the next song unnecessarily. The fact that they maintained an IPX5 rating despite having more openings with these buttons, uh, I think is quite commendable. They've obviously put in a lot of effort into these earphones. On a sound front, it is very difficult for me to dislike these earphones because they've got the speed, they've got the energy, they've got the clarity, the imaging is superb, their stage is nice and expansive. Uh, it's, it's very hard to actually say that these are not audiophile grade. Now, the thing is to get that audiophile sticker or the high-res sticker on this, uh, there is a technicality. You need to be able to play uh, 44, 1, 16 bit uh, minimum uh, CD quality. This doesn't do that because it only does SBC, AAC and Aptex. On that technicality, yes, it doesn't play it, but the characteristic of these earphones, the way it's it, it presents its sound to you is that of an audiophile grade set of earphones that wants to do all of that stuff. They've definitely had sound as an absolute priority. So I, a lot of the earphones that I've tested, you can tell uh, from a lot of companies that uh, features are the absolute most important priority that they have. So they'll work on ANC and uh, touch gestures and slide controls and all this sort of stuff. And sound is somewhere there in the R&D. But when it comes to Yamaha, the way these carry themselves, it's almost as if they've given absolute priority to sound after that they've considered features, after that they've considered build. So the fact that they have spent so much time on making sure these sound the way these do, I'd say these are these are perfect for an audiophile. Uh, if you want uh, to listen to these on the go, uh, I wouldn't say that these are good for just casual listening. Active listening is also good because the fact that these have some level of transparency with different uh, compressed audio files is just unbelievable for wireless earphones. Okay, so if you stuck around for that rant, it's not all positive. There are some negatives, but I am nitpicking. Now, when I'm in the app and shifting over uh, game mode on and game mode off, the audio tone that plays through the earphones when you toggle that mode is a little too shrill. Uh, the same tone also, I think when I disconnect calls is a little too sharp. I, I think uh, they should have uh, definitely lowered the volume down because there's no option for you to lower the volume of that down. I think the transparency mode is a bit weird because I have heard transparency modes on other earphones that are done well and in a much more budget range. Letting in more mid frequencies I think is better than letting a lot of highs. Now, Obviously these have very sensitive mics but these could have been tuned a little differently for the transparency mode because I've tried it out while having the earphones in and talking to my wife and it was it was nothing but sibilance. Uh, if I had a bunch of birds in the house, I think I would have lost my mind. I usually avoid the transparency mode because of that. I just take my earphones off if I need to engage. And those four LED lights on the case aren't exactly the most dull LEDs you have. Uh, they are bright enough uh, to light your path if you're planning on going to the loo at night. But the disadvantage with that is uh, they'll only stay on for about five seconds. So you'll have to keep closing and opening the lid. But they are certainly bright enough to light your path. So considering everything, would I recommend these? Well. I think on a sound front alone, these are one of the best earphones I have heard in the recent past. Uh, I myself do prefer a truer sound. I do like listening to good recordings. Uh, I usually avoid using EQs, which is also why I tested this on a flat EQ straight out of the box. And all of my tests are usually done that way, so you know what you get straight out of the box. So if you're after a trueness of sound and can afford these, I would definitely recommend them. So how much do these cost? Well, at the time of recording this, Yamaha has recently launched these, so they are available on the Yamaha site, but they should be expanding over to Amazon soon. So by the time this video is live, it should be available there. But uh, at, uh, at this point in time, it is on the Yamaha website at an MRP of 24,200. So uh, I'm not sure if there'll be better deals on Amazon, but it's worthwhile uh, jumping between uh, the two platforms to see where you can get a better deal. Uh, and I will leave the links down below for you. So if you're still here, I do presume you like the content on my channel. And if you would like to support it, I'm sure you know exactly how to. I hope I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.